I started to design a new transient generator to replace the old one. Unfortunately, this power supply was my first casualty. It took out a pass transistor and a couple of diodes. I've since repaired it. And I'm sure it's not going to be the last casualty of developing this new generator. So I've had a lot of people ask about the transient generator design. So I thought I'd go over just the basic concept of what I'm doing. This is the original transient generator. This generator ran off of an external power supply. It had a bias input. You had a key to enable it. And an output jack. And a couple of probe points here if you wanted to test with the meter's probes. I was typically using this to attach the oscilloscope to and the ground jack and a shorting cable here. One of the problems with this, this is a high voltage connector here you can see. However, uh, this connector wasn't rated for the voltages that I was using it at or the currents. So I've had some troubles with this. I've had other problems with this generator as well. The biggest thing with it is it's fixed. So you can't adjust the waveform with this generator. Every test that I ran, I kept rebuilding this generator to create more and more energy. The generator will stay configured the way it was when I ran the last test against the 101. In case I ever need to go back and rerun that test, um, I'll keep this thing intact. The new generator is going to have a microprocessor and an LCD, a keypad. The microprocessor will allow me to set the peak amplitude and the number of uh, transitions that I want to actually fire. So what I've been doing before is manually counting the pulses and that time is uh, quite extensive so I just sit here in the chair and I count. So what I'll be able to do now is uh, just have the generator programmed up for some number of pulses and have it run through them all. I'll be able to program up the time between the pulses and uh, there'll be a beeper here that'll tell me when the thing is completed. So basically you'll have uh, the AC line coming in through a breaker It'll go to some low voltage supply that will supply the power for the microprocessor. It will also supply power for a high voltage supply. There will be an enable pin and maybe a DAC control for this. And then the output of this will go to a possibly a shunt for safety. And through a resistor and a capacitor this will be the majority of the charge. And then through some type of a switch. And then out through a coupling network and then out to the device that we want to test. So you can see here I just have some type of resistor divider and they'll be used to monitor the charging of the C. Once this gets up to whatever the peak voltage is that I'm looking for then I'll go ahead and close the switch. The way to implement the switch can be done numerous ways. Uh, typically the three are going to be either mechanically or gas discharge tube or solid state. One of the things that I'm thinking about doing as well is having a transformer or some type of a high voltage supply that I can use for a bias. Again in the old generator I had this secondary set of jacks here for the bias and this had a fairly high impedance between this and the output but it did allow me to put some type of a signal on there just to determine if the meter was still functioning. Maybe I'll have a transformer or maybe even just another power supply that can output enough power where I can actually supply power into the meter and run the meter through its normal functions without giving it a transient or maybe synchronize the waveform with the AC so if I have a sinusoid I could actually fire it at the peak and that would be the purpose of this would be like a zero cross detector so I, don't know, I haven't worked all this out so the big thing I've been working on currently is getting the supply here all straightened out with the capacitor bank and the switch and the coupling network. So I would mentioned one of the problems with the previous generator was the connector. You can see here this is a standard BNC. These aren't rated for a whole lot of energy. Low voltage, fairly low voltage, low current. It's a little higher voltage connector. See again it looks similar to a BNC. See how the plastic protrudes a little bit further. This is a small King's connector. Again, looks similar to a BNC. You can see the insulator is a little bit deeper now. You 
can see here these don't plug together at all. None of these are interchangeable. So another King's connector. You can see it's much deeper. It's rated for fairly high voltage here, but uh, not adequate for our generator. Uh, basically what we want to do is uh, use a connector that's actually going to hold up this time. This is another King's. This is what I plan on using. See it's quite a bit larger. So again, the main thing I've been working on is the high voltage supply, the capacitor bank, the switch, and the coupling network. I've spiced most of this, and I've been pretty happy with the results of all this. I even prototyped up the switch here, and I uh, was fairly happy with that. And so I've gone ahead and I've built up this piece. So this is actually what's underneath our towel. So I just have two wires here I'm going to touch together and that's going to trigger the generator. So our Brahman meter is attached through our 10x attenuator and this attenuator then is attached to the charge bank of the capacitors and then the output of the generator is attached to this light bulb. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to monitor the output voltage of the capacitors and once it gets to the charge that I'm looking for, I'll just go ahead and trigger up the circuit and we should be able to turn the bulb on. A few of you may have saw some of the earlier videos where I was actually trying to blow up these bulbs and I couldn't even get these to light on some of the earlier tests. So that's about 1500 volts right now. There's about 2000. You can just see the light bulb light get an idea how fast to charge so let's let it charge up a little bit further there's about 3000 volts So here's 3,500. The meter is actually loading down the output of this. If I attach our probe here, you can see my high voltage supply is actually putting out about 6,000 volts right now. So we'll just let this thing charge for a while. Should charge up fairly fast without that meter attached. It's quite a bit of load actually. So not quite enough to uh, take out our light bulb, but a lot of power here compared to my first generator that I built. So I'm hoping here that uh, with this we can actually get some fairly good test results.